Hello students, welcome to our class of Automata. Now in our today's class we are going to learn how to minimize any DFA using MyHill Nerada method. Now in our previous classes we have already learned how a DFA works and what are the different elements that we use to build up any DFA. Now there are two ways to minimize any DFA. First of all, what is minimization of DFA? Minimization of DFA means uh, our initial DFA can be reduced. Reduced means number of states can be reduced in a DFA uh, without changing its behavior. Now there are two ways to minimize. One is Myhill Nerado method and another one is called the partition method. In our today's class, we are going to learn how to use our Myhill Nerado method. Now in Myhill Nerado method, we need to use uh, a table first and uh, there are three steps. Let's take one example. Now here is our given DFA where u is our initial state and r, p and t are final states and we are going to minimize it. Before we start, we are going to make a table where in each column we are going to write every states u, p, t, q, r and s and on every row also we are going to write each states p, t, q, r and s. Now draw one line here from this corner to this corner. Now above of this line this part it is just repetition of every pair that is present in this below part. So we are not going to repeat same procedure for this above part we are only considering this below part. Now on our first step our rule is very simple consider every pair every pair in this DFA where one state is final and another state is non-final. I am repeating again consider every pair where one state is final another state is non-final. Every other possible combination that is final final and non-final non-final will not get selected. Now once any pair is selected then write a tick mark there. Now let's see if we consider this u then p u is a correct pair because u is non-final and p is final t u is correct but u q is not correct because both are non-final s u is not correct because both are non-final but u r is correct because u is non-final and r is final okay now consider this u column p u t u and r u got this tick mark now take any one let's uh, take p now in case of p p r is right and this is sorry this is q uh, q r is uh, right uh, q s is not possible uh, t q is possible uh, p q uh, q p is possible in a same manner we we can going to put a tick mark on every pair that follows the rule where one state is final another state is non-final. Let's take uh, P. PQ is correct. PT is not possible. PS is correct. But PR is not possible. So here QP and SP only. Now at the end of the first step we are going to have a table where every possible final and non-final states got a pair. Now remember one thing sometimes students get confused that sir why are you considering UR where there is no uh, direct path is possible. No need to see whether there is any direct path or not. We are just going to consider every possible pair. We are, we are not considering whether there is a direct path or not. UR is possible because u is uh, non-final and r is final okay right now on the second step now here rule is uh, little bit different 
here what we are going to do is that we will see first what are the empty spaces like in the last step we had this rs uh, sorry uh, rt space is empty now i am going to consider this uh, now if i use a over r if i use a over r then it's a self loop so it is coming to r and if i apply a over t then it is coming to s right now on the respect of next state pair that is for rt if we apply a over t then i am getting s and if we apply a over r then i am getting r so our next pair next pair state pair is sr now we will see whether this sr got any tick mark or not yes it got a tick mark here so this will be a tick mark also right now consider this one before it was empty now rp if i apply a then i am in r or if i apply a over p then i am in q before it was not possible because p and r both uh, were uh, final state now it is possible because if i apply a on our second step it is possible if i apply a over p then i am coming to q and if i apply a over r then i am coming to r so our next state pair is qr now see whether qr yes qr got a tick mark so this will be a tick mark also right in a same manner if we apply q u q u q u okay q u if i apply a over u then i am coming to p if i apply a over q then i am coming to r now already p r uh, got selected so this will be selected also now uh, another question may also arise why i am considering a only it is not mandatory to use a only or b only you can consider any input you can consider both input uh, over any state pair that was not get selected on our uh, first step now end of the second step this is our table now you are going to our third step where we are going to repeat the same uh, procedure that we did on uh, second step and we will see whether it is possible to mark up any more states or not now once every uh, state pair got selected then our procedure will stop or there is no possible way to mark up any more states there then our procedure will stop like in this case this uh, tp state cannot be selected anymore and sq cannot get selected anymore why if i apply a over t then i'm coming to s and if i uh, apply a over p then i'm coming to q now this qs also not getting selected so it is uh, going on in a recursive manner once this is not get selected then other one will not be selected and if that one not selected then this is not also going to be selected so this is uh, never going to happen so we will stop our procedure there now you can stop here or you can uh, draw the di final diagram also where t and p will get merged and r and q will also get merged so our next dfa will become like this u pt together u will be a single state initial state t and p will be final state and will stay together qs will stay together non final state and r will be a single state so total number of step will become 1 2 3 and 4 but we started with six states so this is how a minimization using no hill method works hopefully i think this concept is very clear to you thank you for watching